for the perfect plan or for the new calendar year. Over the years, I've kind of narrowed down what I think the perfect planner or calendar looks like for me. I mean, it needs to have tabs for each month. It has to have a sturdy cover, spiral binding, large blocks for each day of the month. And in looking over my planner for 2020, it's actually pretty hard to see what actually happened over the last seven months. I mean, so many things have been crossed out. I feel like it's just like COVID, COVID, change, change, postponed. And then at some point, it's just like cancel this, cancel that altogether. You know, I kind of though love every year starting with a new clean book in any given year. And I love thinking about the experiences, whether they're good or bad, that are going to fill its pages. But this year, once my 2021 planner arrives, I'm pretty sure I'm only going to write in pencil. It just really seems hard to make any plans these days, doesn't it? I mean, schools gives options about in-person, online, hybrid, and then at the last minute changed it online only. Even at church, we've met in person. No, online, back in person, back to online only. And then this week, we've got all kinds of great things happening. I mean, we're going to actually offer the hybrid, even at Emmanuel. You can come to church uh, Sunday morning uh, at 9 or 11 in the morning in person, or you can watch online, or you could join us on Sunday night for a whole different experience that's going to be outside. And until we pivot again, that's the plan for now. So this past weekend, I was asking the Lord for some clear direction on how to lead and how to live in the days ahead. And the Spirit was kept bringing back this verse from a parable of Jesus to uh, my mind that was from Matthew 25, 21. It says, commending his servant, the master replied, you have done well and proven yourself to be a loyal and a trustworthy servant. Because you have been faithful and a steward to small things, I will now put you in charge of much, much more. And you will experience the delight of your master who will say, come and celebrate with me. I mean, I'm thinking that there are a lot of other applications for this particular verse, but it seems like we most often hear that verse, well done, good and faithful servant, at uh, the funerals of Christians. There's a sense of hope and purpose in the expectation of hearing these words when we see Jesus face to face at the end of this earthly chapter of life. I mean, who doesn't want to hear those words from Jesus at the end of a lifetime of surrendering their time, their plans, their money, their relationships, their thoughts, their desires, surrendering everything to him. So with that end in mind, I'm inviting you on a weekly journey with me to ask and answer the question, how should I be living now so that in the end I can hear Jesus greet me with a well done when I see him face to face? So over the last 15, 10, 15 years, I've routinely asked, then prayed, and then partnered with the Holy Spirit to actually answer some specific intentional questions, questions that don't necessarily depend on having certainty for what's happening in the days ahead or in the future. Notice this in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 9. A person plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. How often have you asked God to give you direction or to determine your steps? Um, Seems that then, you know, it, it seems like sometimes even when it feels it's impossible to make a plan or we feel paralyzed by fears for the days ahead or we don't really want to feel trapped by a decision that we might make that may end up not being exactly what we expected or wanted or we're overwhelmed by too many choices or we're just simply apathetic and we give in to this sense of ah who cares i'm just going to wait for someone to tell me what to do and in all of that we simply make no plan at all Could it be that without the initiative on our part, this verse seems to indicate that without action on our behalf, we just might not be able to hear or find God's plan in our life. I mean, I've often wished that God would just write down what I'm supposed to do, but he's never done that yet. More often, his direction comes, or maybe I just actually start hearing and um, seeing his steps when I actually start taking action and I actually get to work on creating a plan. So you wanna join me? I'm inviting you to grab a, a blank notebook and each Tuesday, I'll give you a new question or two that I'm also asking myself. 
to determine where I am and where I sense that I should be going with regard to how I spend my time, spend money, about uh, um, my mental health, emotional health, physical, spiritual health. So for this week, let's start with an easy topic. Let's start thinking about our relationships. Write that title across the blank, uh, you know, spot across the top of a page. And think about the people in your life and the relationships that God has put around you. And just start adding names as they come to mind under these categories. You could write people I live with, my immediate family, you know, your parents and siblings, or your spouse and your children. Um, a heading of my extended family, my adult siblings, their spouses, kids, grandparents, my aunts, uncles, cousins, whatever. Um, write a category for your closest friends, for neighbors, co-workers, church friends. You may think of some long-distant relationships or family friends, people that you've um, been you know, close to over the years. Uh, mentors, people that have poured into you that uh, give you help in your walk with the Lord or your career direction. Another category for people that you could mentor, maybe some people that you could come alongside because you've been married longer, you've been a parent longer, you've been in this town longer, you've been working at your company longer than them, and you could help their experience and those things go better. Ask God to bring people to your mind and literally write down their names in those categories. And next week, we'll unpack a little bit with what to do with that list and come up with a new question for next week.